Hello beautiful creatures, welcome back to Of Crafts and Curios. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my custom altar doll for the Mabon Sabbath. Inspired by all things autumn, I'm really excited to be showing you my process of making this altar doll for the Mabon Sabbath that is upon us this weekend. When thinking about what sort of Mabon effigy I wanted to make, I thought about the traditional folklore surrounding the grieving mother image for Mabon. Stories like Demeter and Persephone are deeply rooted in the autumnal equinox as we say goodbye to the light of summer and prepare for the depths of winter. This led me to opt for a smaller statue doll and to lean into more of a youthful face to really call and invoke that energy of the lost child that is often spoken about in the lore surrounding Mabon. Mabon is the second of three harvest sabbats celebrated by practicing Wicca, making this my second video in my Southern Hemisphere Wheel of the Year series on this channel. If you haven't checked out my Lunar Star video, you can definitely do so after this. So if you wanted to learn how to make your own Autumn Effigy Altar Doll, or just want to see me take a Monster High Doll and turn it into something else, keep on watching! So to begin this project, I'm selecting a Howling Wolf Monster High Doll, as she is on the smaller side compared to most traditional monster high dolls. She's shorter in stature and has a really childlike facial sculpt. She's got these youthful chubby cheeks that I really like and I think will really embody the spirit that I'm trying to bring through in this doll. And in order to begin removing the paint, I've just removed the fringe so I can begin with my acetone based nail polish, taking away that factory paint without the fringe getting in the way. With the factory paint removed, you can see how youthful that facial mold is. So I'm now moving on to removing the hair so that I can begin to pull out the hair plugs as she will have a new hair color by the time I am finished. Just taking a pair of classic scissors to really cut down that hair as short as I can get it. And then I'm going to be removing the ears just to make it a little bit easier for me to cut down the hair as short as humanly possible and have a little more ease when I apply her new hair. And she's good to go. Monster High doll heads are vinyl so they do expand in hot water so I'm just gonna give her a little boiling water bath to really soften up that vinyl so that I can remove the head with ease. I don't want to damage the neck peg that's inside because that would alter her mobility. So just pulling that head off really gently using a towel to keep my hands safe from the boiling hot water inside the head. Super easy. Again, removing the hair plugs, I'm taking a pair of sharp ended scissors and just wiggling them around in the mold just to really loosen up those glue bonds and then I'll begin pulling out the hair plugs several at a time in big clumps. And once she's hair free, it's time to move on to the face up. To begin the face up, I'm going to give her a quick layer of Mr. Super Clear and then begin working on the undershapes of the eyes, building up constant color between layers of Mr. Super Clear until I've reached my desired look. I'm going to be mainly working with browns, oranges, yellows, and reds for this look as I really want to just do those autumn core colors like the colors of the leaves or fresh harvest apples. So I do also leave out a pupil, I just kind of wanted to do this autumn sunrise eye look without having the majority of the iris covered up with a pupil. So she doesn't get a pupil in the end, she just gets these really cute starburst brown popped eyes. I've opted to keep my eyes relatively small. I could have definitely gone really large and comically big for this kind of childhood innocence expression but instead I kept them kind of small proportionately and kind of viewing off to the side coyly or shyly to really invoke that childhood essence. Moving on to the lips, I wanted to go with a really neutral, natural finish and colour as I didn't want to do like a bold makeup look, I just wanted her to look quite fresh and so I'm adding quite a lot of blushing here over the cheeks and nose and then blotting it out with a q-tip. And 
once she's all blushed I'm just going to add in her eyebrows and then I'm going to move on to some freckles nothing says the end of summer like freckly skin so she will be getting a full face and neck of freckles face up she looks so cute and a bit dazed and lost so I'm really happy time to move on to hair I definitely want an autumn toned hair so I've got a few uh, ginger options to choose from decided upon the brighter orange as I feel like it's more youthful and a bit more playful and so I'm just gonna start by wrapping off her face so I don't damage the face up with the glue I'll be using to attach the pre-wifted hair. The glue I use is 450 quick dry adhesive. It is acetone based so if it did come in contact with paint it would remove it. So I'm just going in layers this time for the hair application. Not like my usual round the head circumference in a circle but in la varying layers back and forth so to disguise the wefts but also give a really full fringe without having to do any flipping as the neon wefted hair is not as thick as yarn wefted hair so it doesn't disguise as easily when doing a flip over technique. And to disguise my final wefts I am going to give her a headband so it all works out really well. I won't need to worry about disguising those wefts. And now just trimming down her fringe as I want her to have super thick childlike bangs. I think that's super cute and definitely adds to her youthful look. And here's her finished hair. She gives me such Daphne from Scooby Doo vibes, which maybe I'll have to make a Daphne doll because it's so cute. With hair and face done, it's time to move on to her outfit. I've got a bunch of fall themed fabrics that I can choose from. I first tried to use the pumpkin fabric, but it just was too big of a scale for the size of the doll. So I went for more of a tartan, embellished, fun kind of country vibe. To tie in the harvest theme, I took this heavy weave fabric from this little bag and made a jacket and then I also made a little embroidered apron which is super cute. And with all those pieces together it was time to put her in her outfit. Once I began putting her accessories on, things weren't really gelling together. I didn't love the jacket on her and I feel the same about the apron. So I needed to think of a different accessory and I had just been apple harvesting myself at a local orchard and it was such a beautiful experience and the colors were so bright and vibrant that I thought why not give her a harvest apple sack. So out of polymer clay, I sculpted these tiny little apples, some out of base red, some out of more of a translucent kind of cream color. And then I just gave them a quick brush over with paints, yellow and red, as the baking had kind of turned them brown. And this was the outcome. They look so cute and so realistic. I really like them. So I was really happy with how this accessory was turning out. So I made her a tiny burlap sack out of a larger burlap sack and then just tried to figure out the placing of the apples before I was ready to glue them in. I used some polyester stuffing to fill out the burlap sack but I still hadn't made quite enough apples for my liking so I did paint that red to kind of give the bag some depth. And using my Elmer glue wall I just glued them in place when I was happy. 
and yeah, here they are drying. I think this is awesome for an accessory as cornucopias are something that is often associated with Mabon and although this isn't a cornucopia it does have that plentiful energy of harvest so I'm really happy with this accessory. She looks so adorable holding it and at that scale they do look really realistic alongside her so I'm very happy with that. And now to finish with the final accessory being her shoes, I'm taking these monster high shoes that I think have such a really cool energy. I think they'll look really good with her dress once I've painted them. And then I also made her some tiny little socks out of some scrap fabrics I had lying around. To keep within the color scheme, I wanted her shoes to look brown leather. So I did two varying browns with a white lace and I think they turned out really cool. And this is the finished doll. This is her complete look. I think she looks gorgeous. I am so happy with how she turned out. I think she's going to look so divine on my altar this Mabon. I am so obsessed with her little apples. I can't even explain how happy I am with how they turned out. I think this was 100% the right accessory choice over a jacket that I didn't love and a apron that I could have executed better but she's so cute and I do think that childlike essence comes through and there is a sort of sadness to her expression that I think calls upon those Maybon narratives of the lost child. Maybe next year I will do the grieving mother as that's definitely a different direction you could go for with this kind of altar doll for the Sabbath. And here she is with the first doll in my Southern Hemisphere Wheel of the Year series my Lunasar doll I think they look gorgeous together and I can't wait to see what the complete Sabbath collection looks like at the end of this series I think they're gonna look so beautiful together and it's a really great way for me to channel my craft by creating these effigy dolls for my altar if you enjoyed today's video I would really appreciate it if you gave us a thumbs up or left me a comment telling me how you're celebrating your local Sabbath if you're celebrating a star in the north or a bond down here in the southern hemisphere and yeah if you'd like to see more doll crafting videos more videos about the craft do hit subscribe and I'll be back soon with more crafts and more curios